Uh, today we have with us another young Indian, part of the Voice of the Young segment. She is currently living in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, everyone. Good to be back with you. Uh, right now we have with us Sonia Parajuli. Let's listen to her. Over to you, Sonia. Thank you. I'm so glad to be a part of Voice of Youth. And um, I'd like to start with introducing myself. Uh, my name is Sonia Parazuli, and I'm from Nepal. I've lived most of my life in Nepal and did my schooling there. Um, when I was 18, I moved to India to do my Bachelor's of Commerce from Dalatram College, University of Delhi. And after I graduated in 2018, I moved back to Nepal, did some work there, and then now I am in Exeter. So I did my Master's in Finance and uh, Management from University of Exeter. So um, I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to um, start with my academic journey. Um, so I've done my schooling from Kathmandu. I've lived there most of my life and uh, I got this scholarship uh, from India that is ICCR, Indian Council of Cultural Relationship. And that's the reason why I moved to Delhi in 2015. In um, three years of my um, academics in Delhi, I faced like challenges, uh, language barriers, and uh, living away from my family for uh, for the first time. But I made like lots of friends in my university, and that helped me uh, overcome my challenges. And um, after I graduated, I moved back to Nepal. Uh, started working in an Australian mortgage company as a credit analyst, and that is when I started learning about the corporate world, how we start, like how we work, how we actually write emails and how we like do all the time management, prioritization and everything. Um, after getting some experience, I decided that I wanted to do my master's in finance. So looked for all the universities and I thought like Exeter is a good place. Um, and I applied for Exeter University and I got my uh, master's um, offer letter for finance and management. That's the reason why I moved here in 2021. It was a nine months uh, master's course and I completed it on 2022. And after my uh, master's, I'm working as a senior finance, a senior accounts and payroll assistant at an aviation company. Okay, wonderful. What sort of, uh, <clears throat> let's hear more about yourself. I, you know, the work you are doing in UK, that may not be all that interesting to all of us, but it could be. But let's mm -hmm. hear from you about yourself, how you make these decisions, who helps you, who guides you, pros and cons, pivots in your life and so on. Um, I think the biggest motivator in my life is my mom. She thinks that I can do anything, like everything I think about, I can achieve it. So she's been <laughs> a high inspiration yeah. for me. I also have an elder sister. She's very good at her studies. So I always looked... Uh, up uh, to her for all the decisions and education wise she's very good so I was always like looking up to her um, also my friends the friends that I made in India they became a family like I lived with them for three years and um, we're always like uh, looking up like looking out for each other always supporting each other and wanting to see each other grow uh, in all parts of life so which, which has been really nice um, I think uh, the decision that I make is solely like me. <laughs> um, I like to listen to everybody's suggestions, but when it comes to like deciding what I want to do, it's um, all on me, I think, because that like, yeah, if I start uh, deciding on like other people's suggestions, then maybe one day I'll start blaming them. <laughs> like, <laughs> why? <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> okay. So I like to take uh, decisions by myself. Okay, so why this interest in finance? I mean, is there any reason or because you got to work in finance when you moved back to Nepal? Um, so uh, my interest in finance, uh, I was always good with numbers when I was a kid. I was a very average student, not uh, like a top or anything when I was in school, but very good at maths uh, from a very young age. And um, as I started growing up, I uh, started my college in Nepal. We call 11th and 12th grade a uh, college college in Nepal so when yeah. I was doing my college I realized I'm good in accounts um, and that's when I started developing like interest in management and finance uh, through mm -hmm. numbers and accounts that's yeah that's probably the reason and um, 
when I started working as a credit analyst in Australian company as well, I knew that I wanted to know more like in finance field, how a company runs, um, how the finances work. That's the reason I think I was drawn into finance. Okay. And I guess they pay well also. Um, not for the starters. Um, not for the yeah. starters. <laughs> Once you start facing up in your career, I think the salary will be really good. I thought finance companies always pay well, but now I learned the truth that they no, so, they exploit yeah. the youngsters, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is that true here also in UK or they pay well? No, I think in UK as well, it's not um, not not really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the USA, the salary is really good. Like the package comes really good. But in UK, you start with normal minimum wage for any job. Mm -hmm. And then once you start progressing, the salary starts increasing in different fields. It's different. Mm -hmm. I also work in payroll, so I can like relate <laughs> to the salary side. You work in what? I missed that. You also work in? Uh, so right now I'm working as a senior uh, payroll and accounts assistant. Yeah. So you are, you hold two jobs? Or I I am not clear. What are you doing? Um. So my profession is senior accounts and payroll assistant right now. Ah, I see. And I've graduated with. I know. Okay. So you degree. are since you're working in payroll, you know how much they pay others. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, yeah. In different areas, I know, but not like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, all right, okay. How has your ex overall experience been? You know, you've studied in three countries, mm -hmm. neighboring one UK. Uh, how do you compare it? You know, you what are your thoughts? So, um, when I was doing my schooling and college in Nepal, I felt like we're all taught from our books most of the knowledge, yeah. uh, like comes. From Books, uh, you don't get to research or do anything like that. Yeah. But when I moved to Delhi, I started meeting professors who used to write the books, like Susma Rora was our, one of our professors. She used to write business law books yeah. by herself. Yeah. So it was a great learning experience in India. Mm -hmm. And I was staying away from my family with all the students. So we were always like studying with each other, mm -hmm. spent all of our time like studying or traveling. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to UK, everything was research-based and all the assignments were either individual-based or team-based. So we got to work with diverse team. And uh, I think in UK, what uh, the best thing about education here is they hold two kinds of lectures. One is cohort session with two to 300 students where they teach us about certain, certain topics. And the same class will have another seminar sessions where there'll be like, like 20 students and you get to interact more with your professors and learn more about the topics and okay. discuss in teams. Okay. And you are satisfied with what you learned there, right? I am definitely, yes. <laughs> okay. And what about your future? What are your thoughts? Um. So right now, I think I'll be staying in UK for longer with my job. Um. So we need sponsorship after we graduate. Um. Uh, we graduate and then we get graduate visa. But after that, we have to figure out sponsorship to stay here. And my company has agreed to sponsor me. So I'll be staying here, progressing with the company. Um. Yeah. And maybe I'll do um another course, chartered course, to grow my uh yeah career wise. That's my plan so far. Okay, looks like looks like a good plan. Any hints you have for your juniors, whether in Nepal or in India or anywhere else? I mean, based on your own choices, what might you tell them? Yeah, so I think um, so. I, I started living away from my family when I was eighteen, and that was very uncomfortable for me in the beginning but I got to learn so much about myself different cultures different people lifestyle so I think it's always important to come out of your shelf and uh, be open to growth to learn more from different places and the world is a small place but there's so much you need to learn like there's so much to see and when you like move to a different place or when you start living on your own, there's so much you get to know about yourself. So I think it's always good to come out of your comfort zone. That is what I think. <laughs> okay, so you would recommend 
you would recommend it or you would say it's an option to consider or how strong are your feelings about this? Uh, well, I can't like uh, speak for everyone, but I think uh, it is better for your personal growth. And then it's not like always compulsory that you have to stay away from your family. You can learn so much staying with your family as well. But it's always good like um, if you feel uncomfortable doing something, try it once and see how you feel. Okay. That, yeah, and then it. how do you navigate your way in a foreign country? Any tips on that? Um, I think uh, so moving to UK... I've realized that networking is very important to get a job, to make friends. If, you, if you're not good at networking, it will hamper you, <laughs> like it won't do good. So always learn to network and LinkedIn is a great way. Like how I met you also is through LinkedIn. So yes. I think LinkedIn is a great platform. So learn, to, like start using LinkedIn more. And um, once you, yeah, once you move abroad, just people are very friendly here. So mm -hmm. like, look out for good people, be friends with them mm -hmm. and just don't be depressed because you can feel lonely when you live abroad <laughs> away from your family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is certainly true. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest drawback. Well, I want to come in with an idea of mine. I have not, it's not, I don't know whether you have read it on LinkedIn, but in recent times, meaning last week, a few days ago, First, let me say I'm really happy you are the first young Nepali on my channel. And that's very good. And it's connected to what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm saying is that it's time that people in our region mm -hmm. began to actually know each other. We all yeah. look too much to the developed countries and we mm -hmm. don't know enough about our own region mm -hmm. and it's too late for the older people and the seniors to do anything about it but mm -hmm. I think that the young people should really be connected to each other not in political terms or in national objective but just mm -hmm. as local people yes and when the G20 meeting ended in India I wrote a note on LinkedIn saying Let's shift from G20 to L7. Mm -hmm. L7 is what some people call a South Asia, but mm -hmm. I just don't understand what is South Asia. So I just call it L7, which is uh, Bhutan, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And it makes a very nice acronym. BIB is BIB. And the last four is SNAP, S-N-A-P. And we know that bibs have to snap. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's bib snap is what I call these countries. And I think it's time that the young people uh, get to know each other. Uh, you have already had that experience. And you didn't mm -hmm. say anything negative about it, which is heartening. Because that's what I really think. I would love this channel and I now call this as, and you will understand this because you lived in India, I'm sure, a Desi channel. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. not an Indian channel. This is a Desi yeah. channel. And we don't need, uh, I mean, at some point later in a few years, we might include Africa. But at the moment, it is a Desi channel. I interviewed mm -hmm. one woman from Pakistan two days ago. I've done some from Bangladesh, male men and women. And I'm looking to have more people from what I call as bib snap. Though the woman from Pakistan said to me, why are you excluding Maldives? I said, mm -hmm. well, I don't know, but are they Desi? And she said, yes, they are. I have been there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I said, okay, I will think. I'm now thinking maybe it will become bib snap plus M. Plus M mm -hmm. for Maldives. So I want this to be a Desi channel, really. And yeah. the aim is that the young people connect with each other so that later on in life, the countries actually are connected. And yeah. honestly, if you read, I say, I'm saying read, if you read mm -hmm. the text of what that Pakistani young woman said, and you take mm -hmm. out the first three sentences, which identify where she studied, in Pakistan and mm -hmm. say that 99% of the people won't be able to tell 
which bib snap country is coming from. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the points she's making are what I've heard from others on this channel. So mm -hmm. I uh, so you are the first. I've, I've had a Nepali person, but he's older and he's not young. I mean, he's senior, forties mm -hmm. or so. So you are the first young Nepali person, and I welcome you as that. Uh, but I hope there'll be many more to come. Thank you. And that we will be able to yeah. actually change this channel from being an Indian channel to a Desi channel. So that's what I want to add here. That. Mm -hmm. This is my vision for this channel. So I want you, if mm -hmm. you have some comments on that, please do so now. It's really interesting because when I studied in India, um, I got this scholarship, ICCR, that is like Indian Culture of Council, Indian Council of Culture Relations. And they um, give scholarship to students from all over the world. And I got the opportunity to travel and meet uh, people from all over like the world. And I made friends with Afghani people. I made friends with people from everywhere. And it was really interesting because we were traveling together for eight days and we got to know each other so well. And we became a family. Like I got to know about their culture more, their religion. It's all different, but it's all, we're all humans. So it all comes like connects very well. And I'm very glad that I got the opportunity. And I'm, I think that it's a really good idea that we've snapped. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Okay. Well, since you know people from many places from that time, if you are still connected to them, please connect them to me. Sure, I will do, yes. So that way, you know, I don't have to search for people. I'm asking mm -hmm. every speaker to give me two or three names so that yeah. I don't have to spend my time in searching. You mm -hmm. do this. You've already done the search, so why don't I build on that? Yes, so I that's, that's one general point. And another point is which may be useful for you or maybe not, but I'm telling you anyway, is that mm -hmm. I want the young people to use this channel for what they want to do with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to empower the young people because I find that our society is still too top down. It's too mm -hmm. top down. So I want to disrupt that. And mm -hmm. I want to say to young people, listen, you know, you are not in college maybe now anymore. There's no college channel. And even if there's a college channel, it's highly supervised. This is a free channel. If you yeah. want to create an event and you want to put it together, which is a virtual event, uh, mm -hmm. I will make the channel available to you. Okay, so I want to mm -hmm. empower the young and mm -hmm. really make it a channel that doesn't depend on me. Okay, mm -hmm. it should be a youth driven channel. I am the facilitator and the catalyst. That's my role. But honestly, I didn't grow up in the era that you have grown up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we still, we didn't even have a pen that didn't leak. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> our. <laughs> that was the main job before an exam to find a pen that won't leak on the paper. So mm -hmm. now life is different. And obviously we can't think like you. You have to think yourself. And if you can find a way to organize some activity, whether it is Nepal or it is Bibsnap or it is Indo-Nepal, whatever. I leave that to your imagination. Uh, you are mm -hmm. more than welcome to suggest it to me. And we will make it happen. Okay. Definitely. That's a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, also, you know, I need something new to keep myself in, engaged. Otherwise, you know, I need something new every four or five months. Okay. So this is part of that. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, I think anything else you want to add at this time? I think like I'm very happy to be talking to you right now. <laughs> it's okay. really good. Like, to know your perspective and what you want to do with the channel and you want the young people to speak up do what like you know inform more people which is really nice because i think um it's so difficult like to find the right connection uh, with people when i was applying for my studies in uk i did not know like uh, if i'll get the visa i was so stressed about so many things but i didn't know whom to talk to and it's very difficult to find the right person and I think if a channel like th with a channel like this, we're able to uh, find people and you know connect with them, ask them questions, and get to know more about things where 
um, confused about because someone somewhere must have already experienced what we are like thinking of doing later. Yeah. So I think yeah, really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, you know, when I started this channel, I have no idea. Okay. I, I don't plan things. Okay. I let them evolve. I have never planned anything in my life. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I let it evolve. And now what you're saying is this channel might serve this function. I had no idea of this in April when I launched it. But thank you for the idea. And I hope it happens like that, that it becomes mm -hmm. a way by which you can talk to seniors, not just in your own college or in your own city, but mm -hmm. uh, who are similar to you across countries. Yeah. Even, right. So I think that's a very good idea. And let's see if that happens. Okay, so I am hearing you, uh, but that's uh, just a thought. Uh, anything else you want to say? Let's hear it. I have nothing more to add, but if you have some thoughts, let's hear it. Well, I I think like finally what I'd like, because it's an educational channel as well. Um, when I was in school, I was a very average student. I wasn't very good at like education. I was not bad but you know not the topper and then I think in our like southeast uh, our countries we have this pressure from our family to be the best like study be the best um, and like have very good academics um, you will get there but not everyone has the same capacity so like do what you like the most do what you enjoy the most and yeah you maybe you'll earn a living from whatever you like someday. <laughs> well, by definition, not more than five percent can be toppers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's by <laughs> definition. Like, that's so much pressure <laughs> to pursue like whatever, like education, and then pursue our career through our education. But there's so many things we can study music and then be a musician. We can study dance and become a dancer. Like there's so much potential, and then just don't rely just on one like you know learn skills develop your skills uh, along with education i think that's really important for young people to know okay fine the, i mean you know as i said by definition only five percent can be toppers the rest of the yeah. 95 percent also have lives they have to lead and they also have things they want to do so we should recognize that the toppers yeah. are only a minority and no matter what happens, you uh, most people are not going to be toppers. So we need mm -hmm. something for them. And that's what you are saying that, look, you were not a topper, but so what? You have got a master's from UK, and it's a, et cetera, is a good university, and you are doing some very useful work. So that's great. Mm -hmm. I, I hope you do well at it and best of luck. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. we'll catch up with you in one year to see where you are, see how things mm -hmm. are going with you. Uh, I think till then, let's say bye to the viewers and I'll mm -hmm. be back with another young person from the Desi group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to make it clear now that this is a Desi channel from the Desi group uh, and or some expert. Till then, bye everybody. Bye.